Alright, so we stopped over here in the other video, previous video, right, the cop drug Douglas production function. Now we're going into growth equations, all equations. Now, this whole video, this whole point of this video I'm making right now, this one, is just look at this one equation and basically tell you that, listen here, there's a trick to econ 201. At the end of the day, now, I could be wrong, right? Depends how, um, how it's tested. But if you look at all past papers, everything written in econ 201 is an essay question. Everything else is MCQ. All these questions are MCQ, what I saw. So, like, what I'm trying to say is, you don't technically need to understand this because you're not going to be writing equations. You only need to know the final equation, so the final thing of this whole equation. So when you get a, a past paper or a test question, you can just use this final line over here. You don't need to know how it's derived from there. Right? That's, that's my point right now. Obviously, you have to change it now. They're saying that now you need to write equations and this won't work. So, yeah, but not the point. The point is, I'm going to show you how it's all done. You look at all those delta, triangle, A, what, what all that means. Like, I'll tell you straight, delta A over A just turns to one number, right? So, you need to know all this, right? Now, how, wh what this means, okay? So, the growth accounting equation. Now, if you look at, now, if, please watch my previous video because you want to understand this so much if you never watch it. But basically, GDP, I told you in my previous video, is made of three things. Number one, it's made of capital, which is K, N, which is labor, and um, A, which is which is technology. Another name for it, it's total factor of productivity. They can say that as they can say technology. Same thing, right? This GDP is GDP, but they don't say GDP. They say output growth, right? So just make take a note of that. Whenever they say it, output growth, it means GDP. So, um, yeah, I just remember output growth. I remember that, right? Because they tell you output growth is something, they're talking about GDP. All right, so how does this equation now associate with this equation? Like, look at this equation. They might be thinking, how is this association? Yeah, actually, association. I want to look at GDP over here, right? And I want to do a scenario. Let's say if GDP increased by 10%. So this is my test question. GDP increased by 10%. So my GDP increased by 10%, right? Then I'll say capital increased by 2%. Labor increased by 5%. And technology increased by 3%. This makes sense. Because for the year, GDP increased by 10%. But obviously, there's three things that made up GDP. Capital increased by 2%, labor increased by 5%, tech, sorry, this is capital, this is labor, and technology increased by 3%. All those increases you put together makes GDP overall increase. So this whole equation, accounting equation, how can we like remove all these symbols and turn into numbers? Very simple. Let me get my pen over here, one second. Um... One second. Uh, let me see. Okay, wait, why is it working? Okay, it's fine. Just look at my cursor. Okay. Now, if the test question tells you, see, all of this is about solving the unknown. You will get like one, two, three, and they'll want you to work some symbol out of town, right? Now, if I tell you in the paper, the test paper, GDP increased by 20%, right? All you need to do is to change this triangle y over y which is called delta y over y to 10 percent but i tell you gdp increased by 10 percent yeah so this whole delta y over y means change in y so if they tell you gdp or oh, sorry they'll actually tell you output growth that what gdp is output growth so if they tell you output growth increased by 10 percent this whole triangle y over y turns to 10 which is equals to now theta over here watch my previous video is the share they'll tell you it they'll say the share of capital is like 0 0.3 they'll say the share of labor is 0 0.5 you must know what that means right if they say share of capital is 0 0.3 then this theta over here would be 0 0.3 obviously this theta also be 0 0.3 so they'll tell you that right so they tell you the share of capital is 0 0.3 you know c capital is always associated with just theta right so 0 0.3 they'll tell you that 0 0.3 times 
then they'll tell you capital increased by uh, what did it increase by uh, increased by hmm, let's say 3% right so you just change the whole thing over here delta k over k change to 3 then plus 1 minus what theta is 0 0.3 they'll tell you that's in the question times now labor now you see the whole question could ask you solve for the increase in labor so they'll give you that so that will be x right so this will be the unknown but they tell you that uh technology change increased by five percent for example so you just put five so this whole thing turns to five so you see how i'm saying if they tell you this technology increased by two percent all you do is remove this whole thing and put two now if you solve this equation it's very easy just use your calculator or solve it it's simple it is solving for x in this whole equation right simple and you get the answer and that is how a test paper is laid out or a past paper question you'll see is laid out like that so this whole delta k over k means what is the change in capital so if it increased by 10 percent you just remove this whole delta k over k and put 10. Now, remember, you don't put percentages here in this whole calculation. So, although I say it increased by 10%, you just put 10 because it gives you the same answer at the end of the day, right? If you're going to use percentage, all these numbers you do have to be in percentage form. So, I'm saying don't do that, just put 10. So, that's what this whole thing is saying, right? So, this whole GDP 10 is made up of all this, and obviously, all this has to be equal to 10 so you can solve for x. Now, that's simple, right? So, that's how equations in Econ 201 is done. So that is why I say there's no need to know the how you get the equation. You just need to know that. Now, this is just substitution. I mean, not substitution, manipulation. If I just want to know what's the technology growth rate. Whenever I say rate, obviously, in Econ 201, I mean percentage. Anytime you see rate, think of percentage. If you have an exam type question, right, and you know they're doing like growth accounting or whatever this section, and as soon as they mention rate or they give you percentages, the only equation you can do percentages is in this one here. So technically, it should come to this equation in your head and be like, yeah, I'm going to use this equation. Because these are all rates, you see. So if I just want technology change, obviously the way they got this equation is they took everything to the left, right? It's simple. They just manipulated the equation. So you're just only going to get the change in technology. That, this is also called a slow residual, right? Now, um, total value must, okay, so per capita income. So again, it, now to get per capita GDP or per capita output growth, it's the total growth divided by the population. So the total growth here is capital Y and the total population is capital N. So obviously total growth, which is the GDP divided by N will give you the capita, which is small y, GDP. Obviously, per capita GDP is important because we're going to be using this in all our graphs now from now on because that's the best way to represent standard of living, right? Now, see how they give you these equations. Now, what this is? Same thing. If they say delta y over y, it means what is the increased percentage of uh, output growth? I mean, simple. If they say output growth increased by 2%, this whole thing turns to 2%. So, if this over here, right, turns to 2%, that means these two components made that 2%. So this is capita, and this is per capita output growth, and this is, see, big Y is output growth. Small Y is the output growth per capita. So wherever you see a small letter, it's it's per capita. So this N is the labor. Now, how does equation work? Or how, why must you know this equation? I'll show you a very easy way of trying to understand these equations. You can manipulate it. So you see per capita over here, this whole thing, delta y over y, I want to just put it to the side of the equation. So delta y over y, which is equal to, if I just put everything normal, um, sorry, this is probably small letters, why? Uh, okay, one second. It has to be small y. Um, delta y over y is equal to, big y over y so this is output growth and this will be minus because I'm, I'm taking all to the left uh n over n right so per capita gdp right can you see how it's affected 
so if your output growth let's say it's um it's 10 percent right if you have your label to be example two what's gonna happen it's you'll say 10 minus 2 and this will give you 8 so can you see you can make a theory that the more population you have see labor is the people you have in your economy is the population so the more population you have in the economy you're going to minus it from the total gdp which will actually decrease per capita gdp so you see how i'm trying to put to you this is actually a theory equations represent theories so technically what i'm trying to say is this per capita gdp which is the standard of living in the country will decrease if your population gets higher because as you keep on adding numbers like three over here four or five this number will get very small so can you see so you can make a theory and it makes sense the more population the more people there is more people more re the less like sharing people have in the whole economy for the products and stuff so yeah so you need to manipulate the equations for it to make sense to you so all these equations here are just basically words so this is like saying per capita gdp is equals to your output growth minus the change in your population that's basically what i was trying to say this um is the same thing literally the same thing how i got this same thing okay so similarly with the capital the same thing right per capita capital now remember small case per capita capital the change in per capita capital not change in capital change in capital is the big k so per capita k i'll tell you right now it'll decrease when you add more labor or when there's more population in your economy right it makes sense because you're minusing so if this was 10 and this is 2 you'll 10 minus 2 is 8 so it'll actually decrease your capita i mean your capital right which makes sense the more population always be added um another way you can represent per capita gdp and see what affects that in terms of technology because a is technology is this equation so if you just memorize this equation you can you can literally look at a theory so the more technology you have if this number increase it'll make the output growth per capita gdp also increase you see what i'm saying so you're using these equations to look at what makes up the total of this number this is a number if i say output growth is 10 percent this is 10 so i want to know this whole thing over here it's obviously going to make up 10 so this will be like 7 this will be 3 but what i'm trying to say is if this increase that will also increase huh? and makes sense if per capita capital capital increase then the per capita output increase so if in an essay question if they tell you how does technology um influence per capita gdp per or per capita output per capita output and per capita gdp is the same thing it's simple you know this equation in your head put it on a piece of paper right and look at it and be like oh how does this technology affect this per capita i know if this increases it make output growth per capita increase if this decreases it meets per capita output growth decreases you see what i'm saying so if you know of you want to look at how things are correlated in econ 201 when you look at the equations what makes it up convergence of economies is very simple right if you look at a graph this is a graph of gdp of south africa this is a graph of gdp of number 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 b number b one second number b right if number nubia's graph now is lower but soon it goes up goes up it's converging right now see so it's basically when one country which is poorer than another country catches up with another economy so when the economy catches up with another economy it does better and like basically from bad it goes to good now you know the equation this one over here uh, i did it in my video too or something uh y is equal to a uh hmm, to f k and n now all these are called inputs right this is what makes up this total gdp but they're also saying listen yeah yes capital and capital and labor makes total gdp and also technology which is a these three things they make up total gdp but it also other things that could make up total gdp it could be human capital so we can put human capital that also makes up gdp but right now we only interested in gdp which is made up of a made up of k and uh, labor capital and 
technology makes up why. But you also think why it can be made up of human capital. It can also be made up of resources. Basically, the whole thing is trying to say is yes, although we're working with three symbols, capital, labor, and technology, GDP can be still made up of a lot of other things, depends on other countries. If you go to a country that is rich in resources, right, they might, you'll have to probably do this. GDP is probably made up of that. For example, if you go to Antarctica, they won't have GDP made up of natural resources. Right? They don't have any resources to supply the world. But if you go to South Africa, we may have to add it in our GDP because GDP is actually made up of a lot of natural resources. Right? A lot of businesses we have sell resources that leads to GDP growth. So you see, so we have the natural resources, so it's ideally to put that capital, I mean, resources in our equation. Now, the neoclassical growth theory. Okay, so neoclassical growth theory is another video. But yeah, I wanted in this video make sure you understand the equations and like how it works, what's the techniques and all.